know. I hear you want to play some 19 by 19 games and play with the big boys and girls. Well, this video is going to take you through that process. So it's not going to be comprehensive. Obviously, Go is an infinite game or nearly infinite. So uh, what I'm really going to try to do in this video is just talk about, you know, what should you be thinking about during a 19 by 19 game? This is definitely going to be aimed at those of you who maybe have tried a 19 by 19 game and just had no clue what you're doing. Or maybe you've been playing a lot of 9 by 9 and 13 by 13 and, and you're just ready to take that next step. Whatever it is, I'm here for you. And I'm going to try to, uh, you know, put things in real general concepts to just tell you about what part of the board you should be thinking about during a game. Because, man, that board is really big. Like, there's, there's 361 little spaces on that board. There's a lot of things, options, moves you could consider. So I'm going to load up a game on OGS. I'm going to try to play against another Q player. It's, I'm not really considering this to be a sandbag game. Believe it or not, this is the fourth time I've tried recording this video every time something has gone wrong. So maybe this time's a lucky try. Let's, let's, let's see. Let's see. Let's try a 19 by 19 game. All right. I think we have a game. It's possible. We have, we're playing, it's an 11 Q. And uh, you can see each player is taking the corners. This is very normal. The corner is the easiest part of the go board to, we'll say, defend, for lack of a better term. And uh, this is because they already have walls on two sides. And so if you're, you know, going to build a castle, you can build it into the side of the mountain and you only have to have like, you know, ramparts and bows and arrows shooting at one side. Oh man. Okay. Uh, so there's also this third and fourth line duality. And this is a really good time to talk about this yin yang relationship and go. Uh, in, in general, we see the fourth line as being the, the line of influence. You know, when, when you have a stone on the fourth line, it affects everything else on the board. Third line stones are like digging in, like you're going to establish a, a really solid position, a safe position, you're going to make eyes. You want to do that in the third line. So third line is kind of like, you know, your, your defensive posturing. Your fourth line is more of your offensive posturing. posturing. And you in, basically to figure out which line your stone is on, you just go to the edge of the board and whatever the closest edge that is and count. Our opponent here played a fifth line stone. That doesn't really apply. That's super influential. Um, I'm going to respond with a with a uh, no, so, so my intuition, or my, my natural reaction is to play here. This would probably be the best response. Um, it makes this stone look the worst. Um, but this is a Q game, and I think part of the problem I've been having is that in all of my uh, games, I think my opponent figures out I'm way stronger. I'm just winning way too early. So I need to play it a little bit worse. <laughs> so we're going to play some bad moves along the way here. In this case, I'm playing a third line and a fourth line corner move. It's just a little bit slow just to give my opponent a little bit more time. All right. Now that my opponent's played there, I'll come back and play this one. And uh, hopefully our opponent will extend at the top. And why would that be the next direction to play? Well, we have these two stones here, and this is starting to form a wall. And you want to think of... Oh, good. We're going aggressive. <laughs> Uh, when you have walls like this, you want to anchor them, right? You want to, to have them uh, point in a direction where you have more influence. Um, having two stone walls or more stone, more larger walls than that they don't point towards anything, not that useful. Now you say, look, Black already has a stone over here, but this is just really far from this two stone wall. All right, so from here, this is a pretty natural move. Um, I'm just going to split. This is just super valuable lesson always if your opponent is making multiple groups. Just keep them separated. Real simple. I'm just going to play right in between. Okay. <laughs> Our opponent is now extending this wall. Oh, man. Q games are weird. <laughs> I can understand why playing at a Q level is so hard and infuriating. You can never know what your opponent's going to do. They just don't do what you think they're going to do. Uh, so they're extending this wall. And in this case, I want to get out and, and bop it on the head, basically. And whenever you can, as long as you're strong enough, you want to you actually... When these groups are racing to the middle, you want to get on top of them. You want to cap them, or this is called a hane. Bop them on the head this way. Um, in this case, we could keep this nice and simple. This is a very Q-looking move. This is actually kind of bad shape. The tiger's mouth, when you're in really close quarters, leaves a lot of defects. I don't really want to play that way. Um, I am just going to play here for right now. And connect. Sure, you can... Okay, this is not a good move. Um, I'm making sure I'm strong on both sides. And so when my opponent cuts like this, there's not a lot for him to do. He just has, or she has, 
a weak group over here and an increasingly weak group over here. Uh, and you'll see, you'll see how quickly, um, you know, my groups just don't have problems. Now, normally I'd want to play here and just attack this directly, right? This, even though my opponent has played two third line stones, these are the stones that are really digging into the side of the board. They're about to make a base. Uh, there's just not enough room here. Like there's just not enough room for this group to live. And when you're a beginner, that's really hard to know. Like, like spacing is so hard. It's, it's almost... It's almost as, as hard as like evaluating whether or not a position is good for you or not. Like just some of the hardest things to, to get a feeling for in Go. It just takes a long time. But uh, I'm not going to do that because I want to keep this game to be a you know in, in the in Q land. So I'm just going to connect here. This is a little bit slow. I really don't need to connect this right now. It's not a bad move, but it's just there's no pressure on there's not enough pressure on black. Let's put it that way. Now I have a strong corner. I have, a, I have a group in the center that doesn't have eyes, but has a lot of liberties. And there's no real defects. Yes, good. All right. Our opponent did what they were supposed to do. This is very exciting. Because I have all, what I was trying to say is I have all this influence. I even have a fourth line stone here, and they have a weak group. They need to find a move to balance the weak group. Now, normally, uh, I still have all, all those things are still true. I still have all this power. When you have a lot of power, you want to start fights. You want to make a mess. When your opponent makes a three space extension, you can just play in the middle of it and just start a fight that way. And normally, this is what I would consider. Uh, again, this is a learning game at the Q level. Instead of doing that, I'm just going to defend the corner real slow, like, and just see if, in, in this case, my opponent should play another move over here and just defend. And has a nice little solid group inside of my sphere of influence. And be totally fine. You should play right there. Or she. All right, good lesson. When your opponent attaches to one of your stones, you almost always want to respond locally. Like attachments to the, some of the strongest, most forcing-ish kind of moves you can make. I'm just going to ex extend, keep everything strong, keep my corner points. Again, corners are really easy to defend. Look at how easy I've made 15 points in this corner with just four stones. All right, you can count that as 15 points if you like. Three rows of five, three columns, I guess. Uh, same thing here. I'm going to make 15 points easily here. Um, in this case, my opponent's trying to run out. I'm going to apply that bopping on the head rule again. I want to keep my opponent contained in a local area. Oh, good. And my opponent is now fighting. Trying to start fights everywhere. Okay. Well, here's the good news. Uh, I'm going to play this move. And actually, I could, I could do this a couple different ways. Um, it might be... F yeah, let's play this way. All right, I'm going to take this guitar. In general... Uh, the best piece of advice I can give you when when going into these fights, especially these cross cuts, if you saw this four stone formation, is uh, look to extend instead of Atari. Q players, beginners, they get into a cross fight, and they, they, the first thing they think they have to do is threaten one of the cutting stones. It's not. Make yourself stronger first. Uh, in this case, I, I Atari and then extended. Um, I had other reasons for doing this. <laughs> but just know that's what you should look for. Wow, he's really going to attack me. Okay, that's, uh, that's impressive. Um, okay, I'm just going to stay strong. When you're in a really complicated fight, a really, you know, for the first thing you always want to read is what's the most severe move you can do. In this case, it's almost, the most severe move is almost always cut something. And yes, I could cut this from this, um, but it leaves me with a weakness, and it's a lot of reading, and it's a lot of work. Right now, I'm assuming... You know, you guys are not quite so adept at your reading. You know, you're just playing 19 by 19 games for the first time. Um, so instead, intuitively, if you want to just make yourself stronger so you know you can play more aggressively later, that's always a great um, intuition to to win some of your first few games. If you over-pursue, you're more likely to lose, especially against more experienced players. So in this case, I'm just going to jump out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically look to connect my cutting stones to this group over here. Mm. And my opponent saw that I had three spaces in between this stone and my wall. He's like, ah, oh, you got a defect there. I'm going to cut it. Well, the bad news for him there is that this this is not just a, a three-space extension. I got a wall here. So it's a lot easier for me to... Yep, now we're going to start another cross-cutting sequence. But this cross-cut is, is very good for me because it's like I already have a stone extended from the cross-cut. You guys see this four-stone formation right here? I already have a stone extended, so this fight's good, and I have a bunch of friends nearby. 
So I'm very happy about taking this crosscut. And because my opponent is a Q player, they're going to Atari this stone. If you're a Q player, there's virtually no other move on the board other than to take a sh bad Atari. <laughs> This Atari's really bad. Um, it just it it just makes me stronger in this case. Yeah, okay, you can play there. But when I cover black, notice these three stones are almost dead. Like it's actually getting increasingly hard for me yeah, up. You can do that. But then I'm gonna threaten to capture them here. If I play this move, I, I can't play this. This is gonna be like game over kind of move. <laughs> Um, this move threatens to peep this, and it also threatens to capture these three, right? This move threatens to capture these and these. So by keeping my opponent's groups kind of weak and small, um, I've given my opponent a lot to worry about, essentially. And again, this is kind of a game over mistake, and I'm going to not play it yet. Uh, and I'm going to Tanuki. <laughs> oh, and somebody is weed whacking outside. I apologize for the sound. It's annoying. Uh, tanuki means play elsewhere. T-E-N-U-K-I. Uh, of course, if you played Super Mario Bros. 3, I believe there was the raccoon outfit known as the Tanuki suit. <laughs> I have no idea why it was called the Tanuki suit. I presume that means raccoon in Jap Japanese or something. I don't really know. Uh, over here, I'm just going to make a base. Let's make a little base. So I'm, I'm, I've dug in on the third line. Oh, my opponent's coming after me. Dude. Right here, I'll play. I'll give you one more move. I'm going to respect. I'm going to respect your approach and react to it. Okay. I got... I'm going to do this now. If you... Oh, man. Weed Whacker is back. Uh, this makes me feel bad. I'm going to kill everything. <laughs> All right, so in this case, uh, my opponent tried... Okay, well, I'm not sure what we're doing now. This is just not a good move. Um, <laughs> my opponent tried to kill me from the outside without making sure his groups on the inside were secure. And that's kind of a problem. Oh, you're playing there, that's fine. <laughs> And so now I've killed off these three stones, and this group here is still not alive yet. I actually have a killing move right here, right now. Oh good, he's still trying to save this. How much fun are we having? So much fun. Uh, trying. All right, over here I responded real slack. Like every every move my opponent played, I tried to, to respond to just to stay solid. Um, here, I think just <laughs> connecting is fine. Now, white actually has a good move here. This, or sorry, black has a good move at this throw-in. There's a nice tesuji here. It doesn't actually work, but it's actually really tricky to read out because if I just capture the stone, oh, look at that. Totally found it. Baller. Nice move. But I just connect here, is <laughs> what I was going to say. If I connect, black Ataris, and I die. <laughs> All right, I do want to get... Okay, we're just going to make this more difficult on everyone. Oh, dear. Uh, let's play this one. Okay. You can play there, if you must. <laughs> Alright, this is still dead, and also this is still dead. Black needs to play a, a move over here. This is nothing. Can I get more if I play this way? If I can kill this stone too along with this, that's great, right? But it's a little bit dangerous, so it actually looks totally possible. Yeah, this is totally possible. Um, however, we're going to not kill everything. I'm just going to try to kill this group at this point. My opponent has suffered enough. I don't want to make them resign yet. Actually, I wonder... Actually, you know what I can do? I can sort of tactfully F this up. Yeah. By playing here and let my opponent connect out to keep this a game. Well, it doesn't really keep it a game because then I kill this. 
All right. You know, I'll give you a choice. Do you want to save this? Or maybe can you still live over here? What? You're not... No, I, ga I gave you a chance, dude. Why are my... Why is my opponent making me kill them? It's real. It's really... All right, I can play here. You have to play here. Oh no, this doesn't even work. Sorry, I'm I'm making it up. Oh wow, I tr I tried to screw it up. It actually doesn't work because Black doesn't have enough liberties. That's embarrassing. All right, you know what I can do though? I can screw this up intentionally. Oh, but that's gonna kill me too. Um, it's fine though. Here, let's 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 try to. There we go. Now, let's play over here. And now black can take this. See, I helped. I shorted my liberties. Yep, there we go. Nice. And here, we'll just play one more move to guarantee death. And technically, black has a co here, which is pretty cool. But it should never really come into play, because when I take the co, it's Atari. So... Very good, very good. Do, 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 do. All right, so we killed this, but we let black connect there. We now have something like Sente again. Um, this corner is alive. All right, let's go back to our first game, 19 by 19. Now, let's look at this board from a fresh perspective. I know a bunch of stuff just went down. Black played over here, died in Gote. It means he died and wasted a move in process, basically. Um, I've got this corner. I still have most of this corner. Black can reduce it, but this is this is okay. Or is it actually? What if black plays there? I just play there, right? Uh, it's a little it's a little annoying, but we're fine. No, we're not. We're totally not fine. This is actually a really killer move. Uh, how to prevent that? I don't think I can. <laughs> yeah, I just I just die if black plays that one. All right, so that's pretty cool. Let's leave this here. This move kills this. <laughs> Uh, really feels like it shouldn't, because I feel like I have an extra liberty, but maybe I can play here to live? Maybe. Okay. Anyway, let's pretend that's unknown. I need to find some points to give my opponent. Uh, Black has a stick up here that's pretty ungrounded. And granted, I have this group here. Um, there is a, a defect... I'm gonna. I'm just going to announce to my opponent that I'm coming after this. Now, normally, I would play move like this, or I don't know, something that was more aggressive against this stick. I'm just gonna play very slow, very defensive, and see if my opponent. But this is this is the important part of the board right now. What my white group over here is pretty safe. Yes, the black bottom can get real big really fast, especially after black captures these, because this is now a giant wall. So this is really looking like territory. Ah, all right, good. My opponent has realized that the stick is not safe. And so I'm just going to continue to annoy it. I'm going to annoy it with this move. This is a part of the board where, where I, um, I don't mind digging in a little bit. I'm playing a third line. Sure, you can, you can try to make a base. It's pretty good. Uh, this is the natural move here. Some of you guys might want to push here, but it's actually not that good. I just want to see if I can seal in black. And black says, no, you can't seal me in. I am black. And I'm going to approach this corner. So everything's going great. Super duper great. Except, I should play another move over here. Uh, all right, black, this is, this is an important shape. When black kicks us like this, again, black is touching our stone. We usually want to respond locally. Um, I'm going to stand here. And now, norm, under normal circumstances... You want to be the person that has your stones already connected. If you see this diagonal, there's actually weaknesses in this diagonal. Uh, because they're not connected, that means I can play here or here in various other sequences to sort of force our opponent to take the other one. Depending on what black does, we'll see if I can take advantage of that. But this is a very natural exchange. Oh, another fifth line stone. All right, our opponent is being very greedy. So that's cool. I want to do something annoying. Now, this group is still weak, and it looks like Black is trying to reach out to it. Um, so if your intuition is to, to <clears throat> disconnect or force a disconnection, great. I think that's a great uh, intuition, and, and you know, you'd earn full marks. 
Um, I'm just going to ask for some... What can I have over here first? This, this area is very open. And so I don't want to lose my opportunity to to do something, even though, even though there's, let's see, there was four black stones sort of blocking in this area, because two of them were essentially on the fifth line from this uh, wall, and two of them are on the fourth line. There's a lot of room to squirm down here. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a base. You can already see that the stone is starting to feel alone, a little bit lonely. <laughs> this Hana is pretty big. <laughs> okay. And again, I'm just going to dig in. Okay, we're all just going to dig in. That's great. So I'm going to play one more. And now I have uh, not a lot. Of, this is actually only about 20 points. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, between all this is only about 20 points. So not a lot, but enough. Uh, we will just connect. And honey, see if black cuts. Oh, there's the cut. So, be careful what you wish for. All right, so black, black is starting to take a really big center, but before we do, I want to ask about this corner. And I'm just going to yep, corral black into this corner. So black only has this corner. All this out here is kind of disconnected, which means now I can really fight. <laughs> You could see this center, it looked like black is still threatening to take a really big bottom, but all these stones are kind of closer to white stones than they are any other black stones. Furthermore, this black group isn't really alive yet, so I have two weak black groups over here. So this stone is starting to feel really important. So I'm just gonna let it out. See what black does. Okay, it's just gonna retreat to safety, relative safety. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I'm not sure what shape is best to attack here, <clears throat> but this is this is the hot spot. And so if you're playing your first 19 by 19 game, the board is huge. It's hard to know like where is most important, <laughs> like really, really hard. But just tell, you can tell by the number of weak groups, right? We have a big black weak group here. We have a big black weak group here. And we have a little black, white cutting stone weak group here. All of these are, uh, important, right, to this entire third of the board, essentially. Uh, I'm going to take this attachment. This is a little Tetsuji to see if my opponent will let me get a little bit stronger. And that sounds great. I could play here first. Actually, that's probably a good move. Uh, and then something like this to get out. Um, or I can just play here directly. I think this is fine. Again, I'm just, oh, okay. Yep, so my, so good. All right, everybody's on the same page. My opponent and me were all like, this is what's important, right? Oh, also this white weak, this white group is actually kind of weak because I haven't killed this yet. And so black and force is some sort of capturing race. But this is not, this is real aggressive. <laughs> black has a lot of, oh my gosh. All right. So black is trying to cut without, okay, yes. <laughs> Um, without making himself strong, strong enough first. So this is a real dangerous thing to do when you insist on, on cutting off some weak groups. Uh, sure, you can try that. Oh dear. Did you, did you think about this at all? Because what happens if I just take this Atari? Oh gosh. Oh no. Oh no. All right. This is what happens when you try to cut and you're not strong enough. You get eated. Okay. Shame. It's a shame. Oh, maybe he's just thinking I'll just take a really big bottom now. Uh, okay, yeah, that's Sente. I'll give you that. He's threatening to play there and kill it. Uh, I can connect here or I can just take. Taking is just fine. All right, <clears throat> I have another cut here. So we have two weak groups, essentially. I'm still looking at this one, and I'm looking at this one. And they're not connected because there's a cutting place right here. This is where you need to read. Like, this is where the reading ability just matters. Does this cut work? And basically, for my eye, it sure does. So let's just take it and kill everything. 
and our true power will be revealed. Ha ha ha. Oh yes, see, he sees this, uh, I can kill these. So he comes back here. We just take an easy Atari. And now the game is real over. Anyway, I can make this not a game or still a game. Yeah, let's let's leave. So nor if I if I just connect here, like this is all dead and this is dying. <laughs> Real sad. Let's give him a chance. Let's just play over here. Okay. You're gonna save this. That's a good shape to save it. Uh, let's poke it a little bit because actually it's still dead. <laughs> It turns out. Um, so even even though he killed one stone, he needs two eyes to live. And that's a problem. A really big problem. Hmm. Mm hmm. So then what? No. <laughs> That's just one eye. Oh man, alright, I killed it anyway. That didn't go very well for him. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. I'm really sorry. Um, oh, tricky. If I take, he can. He actually has a really cool Atari right there that, that ends in me dying. So, we'll just fix that. That's a really cool move. Uh, this, this Atari for black here. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. I might have killed too much again. <laughs> Is there a way for us to give something back? Not easily, actually. What can we give back? I don't really... I, I want this to... I want everybody to live. That's all I really want. All right. So what's the lesson here? Um, again, it really started with... There was a big fight here. And when it's when you're in this really confusing fight, my best recommendation to you is make yourself stronger before you, um, you know, try things you don't know if it works. Um, if you if you find a move that is really severe, you have to. That's the move you have to read. Like that's that's where you should be spending you know at least fifty percent of your time on the go board when you're playing a game is reading the most severe move you can think of. And if it doesn't work, then you go on to the next most severe. If that doesn't work, well then you probably just say play the super safe move. Okay, uh, so he's trying to live here. Uh, truth be told, I want him to live there. So let's play a bad move. That's bad. This doesn't. This is totally not necessary. Don't play this at home, kids. And is it, do I have the? Uh, no, the game analyzer is not on. I'd like to have the game compute the score. Okay, you can try that. Okay. Okay. Great. All right, so I have to play another bad move. Is that the moral of the story? Um, this one's actually really kind of necessary. <laughs> In fact. So let's just play it. Uh, this move is actually Decente, and it's big, so we'll take that. Okay. All right, score. We got a couple minutes to figure out the score. If black... Oh, this is all dead. There's there's no point. Oh, this is still really big. Let's see. So we got about 40, 5, 50, 55, plus a corner, about 10, 65. Oh, yeah, and that's dead, too. So, so, so black, white has, like... Or, sorry, black has about 65... But there's almost, yeah, there's almost 50 here. Um, maybe 40, 45 there. 55 here, plus this giant dead thing. So we're way up. We need to we need to lose something real big. Actually, um, how do I lose something big? Well, I can do this stuff. It's not big enough. All right. I don't, at this point in the video, I don't think I should be asking the question, how can I lose something big? <laughs> That's not quite right. All right. At this point, let's just... 
<laughs> play some simple endgame. Uh, again, if we were behind, right, now would be a really good time to be looking for, um, you know, every little scrap of Aji. Uh, Aji meaning taste, literally, but... Um, ooh, ooh, here's a way to lose something. I can bring this back to life. I can do this. Oh, no, this doesn't work until he connects. Never mind. Huh. Okay. Um, if this is, if there is, if I can't capture a stone here, there's a cool Atari sequence. Atari, Atari, Atari. But there's not, because I can just kill the stone. So, let's just keep playing endgame. Okay. <laughs> sure. Uh... Here? All right, I think we're at the point where I need to resign. <laughs> There's the winning craft percentage. Okay, not surprising. Uh, but let's review this game. Do, 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 do. And just review what do you need to do to play a 19 by 19 game? Because that was fun, right? Like, you guys just had fun watching me play a 19 by 19 Q game. Uh, again, take corners first. Really good idea. We want to value third and fourth line in the early opening. Fifth line moves, I'm going to encourage you to avoid. Let's just assume that those are totally not important, right? This is your third line. This is your line of safety and defense. And then let's do... I was going to do red, but that's, that's too aggressive. Fourth line, your, your line of fealty, your line of influence and diplomacy. And there you go. That's where your eyes should be going. Uh, this is this is too slow of a move again. When your opponent plays a move like this, it's probably best just to play a move like that. That's okay. Uh, again, when you're building walls like this, they're projecting their influence this way. So you want to play a balancing stone when you have some strength. You want to you want to lay a claim. Um, think of this as like you have an army, <laughs> and so you need that army to, uh, like, like you don't ever want to use an army, is what I'm trying to say, right? Like you have, if you have a military, you don't want to go send your soldiers off to die. You just want to keep your military forever, right? I've played civiliz Sid Meier Civilization, right? You don't ever want to go spend your troops. So how do you not spend your troops? Well, you take the troops that you have, and you just lay a claim. <laughs> say, this is mine, and if someone invades then these tr these troops will come into action and do something about it. But ideally, your opponent never invades and you just take that as territory. So he's got to find these balancing moves. Our opponent doesn't do that and starts a fight. Again, lesson, our opponent starts multiple groups. Just keep them separated. And again, same thing, just keep them separated. Don't let these connect. Our opponent tries to fight back, but that's okay. Just keep everything strong. Look to make yourself strong for your weak. All these things are so much harder to do in practice than they are to say, because they all involve experience and reading and just sort of knowing locally what's going on, and that's so hard. But, you know, I hope that most of you guys watching this video are to the point where you can recognize, okay, white has the corner, there's a black group here, there's a white floating group here, and a black group here that's trying to take the side, right? We have four groups essentially locally here, and uh, we can see that uh, this is our weakest one. So I'm going to play in such a way that helps defend the weakest one. And I'm going to do that by taking this Atari. And then naturally, now that I'm a little bit stronger, I'm going to attack. In the game, I didn't do that. I came down here. And again, I just defended where I really should probably make some more trouble. Opponent played some weird moves. Again, if our opponent is ever running out, you want to bop it on the head. <laughs> again, within reason, you want to make sure you're strong enough to do so. And our opponent sort of started this fight here, which is not a good fight. This is just too close. I have all these friends. So this this space is not that far, because I have friends. And furthermore, it's not just about friends, it's about weaknesses. My opponent has weaknesses here, here, here. And there's more, of course, but these are all just key points to poke at in the shape. So black can't really hope for much here. Uh, to the point where I'm just like, I, I'm, I'm tanuking, I'm not dealing with this, this is too much of a win. <laughs> Our opponent kicks us, so we just stay strong, very natural, and we make a base, we make an extension. We are kind of inside of Black's sphere of influence, right, even though this is really wide and open, Black is the only person with stones over here. 
So because of that, I'm going to play a little more defensive, a little more third line stones, right? Third line, third line. And same thing if our opponent approaches, we're just going to stay strong. So anyway, those are some pretty yeah, simple sounding, but actually very complicated concepts to playing your first 19 by 19 games. Oh man, if you haven't played 19 by 19 yet, do give it a try. It's fun. Um, it's always for, especially for, for beginners or a lot of Q players, a lot of 19 by 19 games, this comes down to who can think bigger. Uh, often beginner players will get focused, hyper-focused on one area or a single stone or even two stones that they want to capture or kill when there's so much bigger stuff going on on the board. Whoever can tanuki the most and play away from whatever current local fight is going on will usually win those kinds of games. So, uh, you know, if this is, if you're just trying your first 19 by 19 game today, welcome to the world of Go. I'm so happy for you. I, I hope you keep coming back to this channel and, and watching more of these videos. I know most of the videos I do are much more advanced. Uh, but, you know, well, once in a while, it's nice to take a step back. So, anyway, thanks for watching.